Welcome in to the Cubs Recap Podcast, a presentation of our recap channel here on YouTube and available audio only wherever you get your podcast with my partner Gordon Wittenmeyer at GW Cub on Twitter. I'm David Kaplan at the Catman on Twitter. All right, Gordon, let's talk about the Chicago Cubs. They came off a sweep of the Oakland A's, came home, lost three of four. A good series, but lost three of four to a talented Dodgers club. Your takeaways from 23 games of Major League Baseball. Well, before we go down that road, I want to hear you sing I Love L.A. again. You still loving L.A. as much as you were last week? Not quite. Yeah, not quite. I loved it Friday when they won 13 nothing and almost had a perfect game from Drew Smiley. The rest of it, not so much. This is a weird team, and we said it last week, maybe the week before that even, that they're going to be fun to watch. Those games were, for the most part, entertaining. I mean, the weather was crap most, most of the weekend. Um, but, uh, I mean, they competed in a game against Kershaw. Uh, with Stroman on the mound, he gave up three home runs, hadn't given a, up a home run all year, and two of them were back-to-back in the sixth inning after a walk to Freddie Freeman. That was the end of the game right there, essentially. Um, and But they, they competed against Kershaw. Julio Arias, who might be better than Kershaw, we can make that case at this point in his career, they'd beaten him twice. Those are his only two losses. He's, he's like a Cy Young winner uh, this year, other than the Cubs. So... Uh, that's interesting, but then they lost three out of four, right? And why? Because they can't do anything at the end of those games. They've got a couple of, uh, right now they got a couple of guys in that bullpen that are really struggling and nothing close to a semblance of a closer. That, that, that's where I am right now with this. Okay, so offensively, let me read you some numbers. I, I love the column by John Grachowski every week in the Chicago Sun-Times, and it's called By the Numbers. The Cubs being an offensive juggernaut is a twist few saw coming for 2023. Nonetheless, through Sunday, the Cubs led the National League and were third in all of the major leagues with an average of 5.76 runs per game. Their 796 OPS as a team, second only to the Tampa Bay Rays at 891, and they had slugged 28 home runs after hitting a combined 16 in March and April of 2022. Is that sustainable? Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so but let's assume that it is, is not sub- sustainable. Is 75% of it sustainable? Yes. Okay. Do you take that? I would hope as the weather warmed up to get better. That 75%. I, I take it. I, I take it because that means you're going to have stretches like this. You're going to have some stretches against teams like maybe the Braves that are going to pitch you a little bit better than some teams. Um, you're going to have a series against the Rays at some point. And, but you're going to have stretches like this. I take it. Gives you a chance to win. Because what do we say coming in? On paper, that was maybe an area that, that we were concerned or that l- looked like it could go either way. I, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd take 75% of that uh, for the season. Uh, but, but I tell you what, um, it as much as we like the rotation and we see Kyle Hendricks is about to start a minor league rehab. So he's right on track for that may return, um, which could mean Wisniewski goes back to minors and figure some stuff out. Could be a replacing whatever they're replacing Tyone with. Uh, But it should strengthen what already has looked like a strength for this team. It's so if, if this team wants to stay entertaining and stay relevant, there's a couple guys in that bullpen that either need to figure it out or, or, or maybe you need to look at. And, and, and I bring this up kind of as, as a shout out to one of our uh, more loyal uh, watchers and listeners, Elise, who brought this up on, uh, on our Twitter timeline. She wants to know, what are they going to do for closer? What closers are out there, right? They're not making a move right now. Look, this kid, Phil Fulmer. I'd rather have him, the old Tennessee coach, than Michael <laughs> Fulmer, the guy we have. I can't hand him the ball in any type of a leverage situation because he's just not getting the job done. Uh, Jeremiah Estrada, let's see what he can do. He throws 100 miles an hour. He's young. He just came up. I don't know what his command issues will be like at the major league level. Cody Hoyer is going to be back at some point. 
he he threw a simulated inning over the weekend. Came out of it pretty pretty well. Okay, he's coming off Tommy John, so a sim inning doesn't pump me full of confidence that he's going to be closing games that are meaningful by right. mid July, mid June. Is it Camp, July? I, Camp, I think it's probably too much to ask to think he's going to be in the ninth inning this year at all. I mean, if he comes back, I think you're really managing him tightly, and and I don't know if you I don't know if you put him in in those situations. We'll find out. If, yeah, I'm not giving up any type of you know, decent capital to try and trade to go get a closer right now. You tell me my club is eight games over in July and they're hanging in the race. Absolutely. Go do what you got to do. But right now, this is pretty much the hand you've been dealt unless there's something coming through the system. Now, credit where credit's due. Uh, Brandon Hughes and Keegan Thompson are in particular are doing their jobs. Mm-hmm. It's 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 the veterans that they brought in, right? Fulmer and and uh, Boxberger, who have, have had these struggles. And and let's be clear about one thing, too. We know that Ross conspicuously last year did not name a closer, even though he was using David Robertson until the trade as his closer. He likes to do that, right? Where he he has what he calls pockets, right? Where he the, this this part of the lineup belongs to this guy if we get late in the game. Um, but that doesn't mean he's against a single closer. He clarified that position over the weekend and, and said, you know, we just don't have that guy. We don't have the personnel to name that. We don't have the Craig Kimbrell or the Mariano Rivera. If he did, that would be his closer and he wouldn't have any problem, um, manipulating his bullpen around that. So I would suggest cap to your point, if they're in it, in July, go get one. Go get somebody to help the back end of the bullpen. But you've got to force management's hand, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just speaking fact. Okay, if I want to go get whoever that guy is this year's version of a Raldis Chapman, somebody that, hey, man, I can hand him the ball. You know who this year's version of a Raldis Chapman is? A Raldis Chapman. He's pitching for the Royals. He's back up over 100 miles an hour. He's given up one run in nine outings so far, and it took him until his last one on Sunday to give up that one run. He's pitching his ass off for the crappy Royals. You don't think they're going to be sellers at the deadline? He's on a one-year contract. What about there's a kid sitting out there. Not a kid. There's a man sitting out there. He's a free agent. Zach Britton. Britton. And he's left-handed, which they could use. Yeah, so would you take a run there? Cap, the fact that he's still a, a free agent uh, probably tells you all you need to know. I mean, are you You have to be pretty damn sure you're improving what you have to go get him. Now, that said, you could sign him and send him to the minors on a look-see, get him a bunch of innings, lo- load him up with three, four, five outings and see what he looks like, and then cut him or bring him up. Uh, but they haven't done that, and that it, it's and nobody has. So it suggests to me there might be a reason behind that. Now he threw for people, and the reports out of there were that he was up to ninety-two point something with his fastball. I don't know what his location looked like. I don't know what his secondary pitches looked like. But that's a tick down from what he was before having Tommy John surgery in twenty twenty-one. I remember he came back from Tommy John surgery. He right. pitched three games down the stretch last year. Um, didn't look great, but. He was coming off the surgery. I, I do think that's something you, I would be shocked if they haven't looked at that, but uh, they need to be sure they're improving what they have. Otherwise you just, you just got the same, same as what you got from the left side. All right. So let's go back to some of the offensive stuff. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm not done with this one, man. I want to look at some real options here because if this team is, I mean, you, you should care about this more than I should because you want this team to be good. If these other pieces, that lineup you're talking about, doesn't even have Suzuki at full speed yet. He's Agreed. still figuring stuff out. So uh, if that lineup's, like we said, 75% as good as what they've shown, if this rotation is what what they've shown, and, and they're mostly veterans, I don't know why they wouldn't be, especially with getting Kyle Hendricks back. Then it's all about that bullpen, man. Um there are some guys out there, and I mean, you go, you look at the Nationals; they're going to be sellers. Uh, Kyle Finnegan's their their closer. Um, 
He had one bad outing, but he's been really good since. Maybe you look at him. Carl Edwards Jr. is on that team. And he's pitching that? a pass out. I don't know if that would be necessarily a great fit. The Giants might be sellers. They got a lefty in Scott Alexander who's pitching pretty well. He's a veteran guy, and he's not really a closer, but he could help. You know, they got Tyler Rogers over there. Now, here's the name. Here's the name that I want to hear on your radio show next time I tune in. Liam Hendricks. Uh, you know, that's a really good one because he's coming back from cancer treatment. He's he's announced himself clear of can cancer. Correct. And he's about ready to start a minor league rehab assignment, and that shouldn't take long. Okay, so if that team does not turn things around. And we know they're the Cubs, not. Probably not. If the Cubs are in the race in July, is it a reverse Craig Kimbrell, who people might not know this or remember this, he wanted to stay in Chicago because his daughter was being treated by Chicago doctors. Maybe Liam says, if you want to move me to get a piece back, I'll go to the Cubs because my doctors are here. He was treated at the Mayo Clinic, but the doctors he's been working with besides Mayo is, are here. That's a terrific point. In fact, give him Madrigal and Hoyer. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really hilarious. I don't think okay. he would mind that. Well, that that's an interesting name. He's uh, only got I want to ask you about Nico got, Horner. This is the last year of his contract. So, so you know, they can't demand a lot because you're not getting club control. He's a rent -a guy. And they'll they'll gladly lose whatever's left of that contract to give it to the Cubs. Cubs can handle it. And so it might not cost that much. Interesting point. Uh, I want to ask you about Nico Horner because he's off to this, you know, amazing start. He's an outstanding person. He's an outstanding leader. He's an outstanding defender. And every night you look up and go, wow, he had two more hits. Wow, he had a three hit. Wow, he had another double. The guy just keeps putting up numbers. Is Nico Horner this guy or you expect some regression? Because he looks amazing. Well, statistically, I think it's just hard to keep up what he's done so far. Mm -hmm. I don't see any regression. I, I don't see any reason for regression in terms of putting the ball in play the way he has with good contact and things like that, because he's, he covers so much of the zone. He covers some of out of the zone. I mean, he, he's really good at getting on top of, of uh, that high fastball. Um, and he's just a smart hitter on top of everything else. You can't, uh, I mean, there's no shifts. You can't really shade him. He, he's, he's really good at uh, driving the ball the other way when, when that's where the ball is pitched. I don't think, you know, unless something, in, unless it's something physical where he's dealing with some kind of nagging injury or there's fatigue in August in the dog days or something like that, I don't see any reason why his quality of at-bats and his quality of contact should go down. And, uh, and it, you know, if that keeps up even close to statistically what he's doing right now, dude, they haven't had a leadoff hitter since Dexter Fowler. Now he's not the same kind of leadoff hitter that Dexter Fowler is, but I don't think it's any accident that those were their best years in the last decade. Uh, they had a lot of other great players on those teams, but they had, a lot of those great players on teams around those years. And the one thing that was missing was that 300, 385, 390 on base percentage in the top spot of that, that batting order. And so I, I talked to Nico, a couple of us stayed around until Nico was done the other day. Cause this is an example of what you're talking about. He's such a, he works his ass off. He was in the weight room for an hour after the game on Sunday. And a couple of us waited around. He was the last guy out and talked to him about getting adjusted to that, leadoff spot and he likes it because he gets the the uh the extra at bat but when i brought up to him that hayward pointed out the other day that the difference between that team you know when they were winning and what happened afterwards was dexter fowler was the leadoff spot i mentioned they haven't had it's been a revolving door ever since and he said well you mentioned something interesting there whether it's the high on base or you know 
the qualities of a leadoff man. That's one thing. He said, but the consistency at the top of the lineup is the other thing. If you look around the league, most of the good teams have a top two, three, four. And then you mix and match everywhere else. He said, it, there's, there's something really comfortable. You get into this rhythm where I get up there. I know I'm leading off the game. And I have a plan and a, and a rhythm and a routine. And I know Dansby's right behind me. And there's something about that. Like, like um, I guess it's intangible. But you remember the Daily Double back in the Dan day? Dan Berg with uh, Bobby Dernier at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you just left it there, and it worked. Uh, and if they can do that, and then your Ian Haps and your Suzuki's kind of fall into place right there, and then you mix and match everybody else, or if Bellinger's really hot, he maybe elevates uh, up there. That is a maybe that's the difference maker in this lineup this year so far, but definitely I think there's something to that, and 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 Nico's very comfortable there. So you've got Cody Bellinger right now has a 930 OPS, not quite what he was in 2019 when he was a thousand thirty five, but it's a leap from 789, 542, and 654. Yeah, I'd, take last, 8, 830. I'd take 830 for the year and call no it a question, percentage, right? And again, these are all from my guy, John Grachowski, by the numbers column. But he does pre predict a bit of a regression for Nico for these reasons. He said at 355, 400, 473 slash line, he's a huge plus batting leadoff. The on-base percentage for the Cubs leadoff man a year ago, 307. Major league average, 320. His on-base percentage, 327 in 2022. He was 382 in 170 plate appearances in 21. But this year, his 6% walk rate trails the 9% major league average. He has got a 369 batting average on balls in play, 74 points higher than the major league average, 69 points higher than his batting average on balls in play in his first full season. A dip is likely. Yeah, whatever. You, you got my mind swimming in all those numbers. Of course, a dip is likely because his numbers are so off the charts right now in such right. a after such a strong start with such a small sample size. Of course, the numbers are going to come down over 162. That's fine. But if he's consistent, if he if he continues this, you don't have to have a perfect leadoff hitter in today's game. You don't, you know, and, and by the way, what we sometimes think historically of perfect leadoff hitters, go back and look at some of the on-base percentages of the, you know, the Maury Wills and even, even uh, uh, Lou Brock. Um, so, you know, Ricky Henderson is probably the ideal leadoff hitter, right? High on base and, and, and he can, and he can hit you with a home run, uh, leading off a game, but, uh, nobody, how many people have that 400 on base in the leadoff spot that, that can, that can hit pitchers from both sides and, and uh, you know, and, and play every day. I mean, they're, they're just, there just aren't a lot. And so if you can get a guy that can give you most of what you want up there, then, then you're doing pretty well. And then if you can line them up with a legit number two hitter and some legit run producing, I mean, you got a all-star switch hitter with some power and some eye at the plate in half who's showing it again this year and your three spot behind your $177 million guy. And then you got Suzuki coming in, still getting his legs under him, and probably better for the year he had last year and some of the struggles he had and the offseason of work. And you got Bellinger, so far so good. It's a hell of a start, but it all starts at the top of that lineup, and I don't know where else Nico's going to fit best, right? Okay, so... Looking at this team right now, the Cardinals are struggling. The Reds, ugh, the Pirates, I don't think it's sustainable. Is it a Cubs-Brewers battle for the foreseeable future? No. I mean, the Cardinals are going to get better. And by the way, I'm not so sure that the Pirates are a fluke. I don't know that they make the playoffs. I mean, You've seen that. their schedule? They haven't played that many good teams. I get it. Neither have the Rays, right? And, and the, you know, and the Rays are doing all these great things and undefeated at home and all that. Um, but uh, they've got real players, dude. Go, go look at uh, um, McCutcheon 
is having Brian a, Reynolds is a great player. Brian Reynolds is a great player. Uh, Brian Hayes on that team. Um, Sawinski, the guy from here, Sawinski, Sawinski. Uh, he's one of their top players in, in war and OPS and the whole thing. Um, and they just extended the manager. They seem to like what he's doing and the way the team's Derek responding Shelton. to him, Derek Shelton. Uh, so I don't expect them, like I say, I don't expect them to keep this up. And they got the best record in the freaking National League coming out of the weekend. And so, um, again, we're, we're not even through April yet. I don't expect that to hold up, but I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to be cupcakes when, when the Cubs face them or whoever faces them. I, I think, um, I think they're going to be competitive, even if they wind up being one of those teams that loses a lot of close games as the season goes on. And maybe they don't even finish with a winning record, but I don't think they're a hundred loss team again this year. I think, I think they're doing something, building something over there. All right. Everybody who listens to this and our numbers are just going up and up and up and up always waits for me to give you a little bit of something to nibble on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This team is way better than you ever gave them credit for. This team is going like that. I'm not telling you they're that yet. We're taking <laughs> off, Gordon. It's a pretty good baseball team. Boy, you better, you know, you, you take off at that elevation. You better have enough fuel to, to land that plane, dude, because uh, we'll see. It's a long season. Uh, I would say you're buying a stock. If you're buying in the Cubs, that stock is going to be like Amazon in about two years. Look yeah, you out. Better, you better hope it's not like Fox. We're going like this. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be like, phew. <laughs> there go the Cubbies. <laughs> I, I, you're amazing, man. You're singing I Love L.A. last week when they're coming off the series out there. And now they lose three out of four. Their bullpen looks like crap the last couple of games. And you're talking about just how how high you're going to fly this year. You're We've still, lost one I love you, man. since the opening series of the season. Yeah. And yes, mm -hmm. I said we. We. That's my <laughs> team. Hey, uh, hey, you, you be you, Cap. Uh, don't ever change, man. Never. Never. All right, before I let you go, last thing I got to ask you, Matt Mervis, everybody's screaming, can we get Morell and Mervis up here? I don't want to tinker with the chemistry yet. They're off to a good start. Let those guys continue to play well in the minors. If there's an injury, obviously things change. I'm not moving on from Mancini or Hosmer just yet. The vibe is good in the room. Let's yeah. keep it going. I agree. And those guys, and, and the... The vibe of those guys right now is good. And those guys in particular, they, they, they're they a nice fit in there. And, and Mancini, I think, will come around. Hosmer, I think, is is a guy I look at with the most critical eye of the two of them. And, you know, and, and maybe Mancini is a guy that they have to move on from at some point. But Hosmer's really the guy. Plus, we know he's they're only paying the freight for the minimum on him. So he's really easy to move on from. It doesn't cost you anything. And you got Mervis. So... I've said it before. I think you give him May. There, there's that. There's that day off at the end of May, and the, and the first series in June on the road in San Diego. To me, that's the that sweet of the, spot. Yes, and you've given it two full months there. Kyle Hendricks is probably back. You got a really good evaluation of your rotation at that point and your health status. Maybe you figure out some things in the bullpen by then with your in-house options, or at least you know where you might be going to try to get help. You got a really good idea what's going on with the rest of the lineup and Suzuki's probably up to speed and you've given Mervis two full months. Now I think you're on to something if Hosmer's not getting the job done and you can make that change and maybe get a, get a boost. And it, even if you don't get the boost, you, if, if everything I say is the landscape, then it's not going to hurt you either. All right. Last thing we've got, a fan note that came in from a guy who they call the little tiger from the region of Northwest Indiana. The little tiger said, I've been a White Sox fan my whole life. I'm so frustrated. Do you think it's time I jump off and come over to the little blue machine? What do you think? <laughs> well, you can, you should have probably jumped off the White Sox quite a while ago and you'd have been fine just jumping into Lake Michigan on that one. 
Uh, whether you want to jump uh, to the Cubs or not, up to you. I mean, if you're jumping off of your team, you might as well. Hey, you might. Have, what do they say? There's a lot of fish in the ocean out there, man. Go, go, go! Find a team that's a good fit for you. Maybe they you're Blue Rays Express, guy. baby. There it goes. Hey, the Rays are doing pretty good. Go, go, jump, jump, jump on the Rays. Hey, man, have a great rest of your day. All right, you too, man. All right, Cubs and Padres, then they get the Marlins, and we'll have another podcast for you. For Gordon, for our great staff, I'm David Kaplan. Programming note, Thursday night, first round of the NFL draft. I'll be broadcasting live from Gate O at Soldier Field, right inside the entrance, and we'll carry it live here on our YouTube channel, and it'll also live here on demand. Have a great rest of your day. Please hit that subscribe button and please hit the notification bell. Anytime we publish, you know it. For Gordon, I'm Cap. Take that.